to talk to you guys about a cool concept that many of you have probably already heard of, but hopefully I can show you a new way of thinking about it that'll help you apply it directly to the fretboard of the guitar. But before we get into it, there's a couple of concepts you really should know first that'll help you understand this concept better. The first one's the musical alphabet, and I've already done an entire video on this, which is linked below. So if you're not familiar with that concept, go check that out first and then come back. The next one would be, what is a major scale? The easiest way of thinking about a major scale is that it's just a set of pitches or notes that start and end on the same pitch. It's going to ascend the musical alphabet until it gets back to the note that you started on. But depending on what key you're in, there will be some sharps and flats along the way. Um, which brings us into this next concept that we're going to learn about today, which is called the circle of fifths. This can best be thought about as a guide for learning all of your key signatures, and then you could determine which notes are going to be in which major scale. So let's take a look at the circle of fifths. You'll see that the first key on the wheel is the key of C, and that's because this has no sharps or flats. Now the way that the circle of fifths works is that you're going to move to the right, and it will go up by five pitches. So for example, if you counted up from the note C, you would get C, D, E, F, and G, or the interval of a fifth. And so now we're in the key of G, and every time you go over one key on the wheel, you add one sharp. A good shortcut for the sharp you're going to add is that it's going to just be the letter before whatever key you're in. So if, since we're in the key of G, we scoot back one letter to F, that's going to be our sharp. So now our G major scale is going to be spelled like this. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp instead of F, and then back to G. All right, so now we're gonna count up five more letters, G, A, B, C, D, and we're in the key of D. So now you always keep the sharp that you added from the key before. So F sharp is going to also be in the key of D, but we're going to continue with our same rule of adding a sharp to the letter that comes before whatever key you're in. So the one that we add for the key of D will be a C sharp. And so the D major scale will be spelled like this. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. Okay, so you can probably see the pattern here, and you can just work the same concept all the way up until halfway across the wheel, or the key of F sharp. That's where we'll stop, and then we'll actually have to go back to the beginning and go around the other side of the wheel until we get to the same halfway point. And this will be a little bit of a different concept called the circle of fourths, and we'll discuss that another time. For now, I'd like to show you how to practice the circle of fifths on the guitar. So I have another video where I show you a cool major scale concept and shows you all 12 major scales right here in the first four frets of the guitar. Um, that would be another helpful video as you're practicing with this video if you're uh, unsure of how to find some of these notes. Okay, so let's back up to the first key we learned, the key of C. Um, you already know the notes that are in the key of C using the circle of fifths, but now we just need to find those notes on the guitar. So here on the third fret of the A string, we have the note C. And then the next note is D, which we can find using the open D string. If we're gonna continue up just going in the first four frets of the guitar, the closest note E would be on the second fret of the D string. And then F is on the third fret of the D string. Our next G that's closest within the first four frets is going to be the open G string. A, two of G, open B, and first fret of B to get C again. And that's our C major scale. So the next key that we talked about was the key of G. And for this one, we're gonna be starting on the third fret of the E string, which is the note G. Then we have the open A string, and then we can find the note B by playing the second fret of A. C will be right after on the third fret. Then you have the open D string, and then the second fret of D to find the note E, and then the fourth fret 
of the D string to play the note F sharp, and then open G again. Now with this one, you actually can keep going and fit two octaves all on the first four frets. So let's keep going. You have the note A on the second fret of G, and then the note B on the open B string, and then the first fret of B to play the note C, and then the third fret to play the note D, and then the open high E string, then the second fret of high E to play the note F sharp, and here we are back at G on the third fret of high E. Okay, and so the process basically is that you use the circle of fifths to determine what letters are in the scale, and then you look for those letters or pitches in the first four frets of the guitar. And that will show you how to figure out what notes are in what scales. And you can apply this concept not just to the first four frets of the guitar, but really an, in any position. We're just starting here because it'll help you learn the fretboard faster if you start in the first position and then move up into higher positions later. So uh, I would encourage you to work this system all the way through um, up until the halfway point, and then we'll talk about the circle of fourths or going the other direction to get our what we call flat keys in the next video. For a complete list of all the notes and all 12 keys, you can check the comment section down below where I've written them all out for you. I didn't want to include in the video because I felt like it would take too much time. And also the main thing that I wanted this video to help you with is for you to show you how you can do that yourself using this system to work it through all 12 keys. So maybe try it out and then compare it to what's in the description to check your work. So if you found this video helpful, please be sure to like and subscribe and let me know down below in the comments. See you next time.